What's good, y'all? What's good? Today we're gonna be talking anime. I know that isn't something that you see me talk about a lot, but we're gonna do it today. Now, since it's gonna be kind of a lengthy video, I'm gonna just kind of be chill right here. Don't be shocked if I get a little movement in there. No, I'm just um, but yes, just kind of wanted to give my little list of my top 20 favorite anime that I can think of at the moment. I mean, I, I mean, I got, I do have a list that I got for notes and such. You know, it's still just gonna be kind of me rambling on about these different shows and why I kind of have them there and what I like about them and such. Um, there's a couple shows that I think are just a little too new to count. Um, even though there is one that like did finish earlier this year that I did kind of put on my my top 20 but um, but these ones I just felt it was a little too new to count one punch man um, my hero academia um, Grimgar of uh, fantasy and ash assassination classroom and the heroic legend of Arslan. Um those ones uh, I really 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 enjoy um, you know what what they've done with the their seasons and you know i'm hoping they they continue well, i mean the assassination classroom ended so i mean that was a great series i really enjoyed it but it, I, I just felt it was still a little just too fresh in my mind to really insert it on my list of top 20. um so yeah let's go ahead and get in to it all right like number 20 is yu yu Hakusho. i mean it has some such great action in it um a lot of the different um plot arcs were really fun to watch and entertaining like like going all the way from you know yusuke finally being able to get his body back and then him starting to learn his powers and you know him trying to get a top like in kai and uh, with the tur like the dark tournament and you know with the Tagoro brothers and junk all that craziness and then even late the second tournament that they end up doing to you know see who's kind of gonna rule the demon world or whatever I mean it, 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 like the way the series works it's just really really cool and it, it's something it's like one of the shows that I feel like really kept the action up with um, interesting storylines throughout the entire series, even though it's one of the long running uh, shonen series out there. Number 19, I got to say, would be uh, Higurashi no Naku Koro Ni. That series is bonkers. Great, like, like, I don't have a lot of like, horror related shows on this, this top. 20 but yeah the total psychological thriller type junk to me is like it, I always really like that kind of stuff and also it plays with like time loops and stuff like the whole series like even though I watch like like the way I had to end up watching the series is though you know what the because I'm a I'm mainly a dub watcher if you haven't checked out what uh, I put what I said in the dubs versus subs uh, discussion we have on Money Cult, link in the description, um, then you would know I'm mainly a dub watcher. But yeah, for that whole series, you know, I, I watched the first season in dub because that's the only thing that's dubbed, and then the rest of it um, in subtitles. And man, I the, the, the way the story worked out was like, this is this is crazy is like crazy how they made it work and you know trying to figure out how to break the time loop um and save everyone i thought that was, was really cool and and it's one of the most like out there graphic and horrific like visuals that i've kind of like seen because like when you very very first put it like put the dang on show on the very first episode you're just like oh oh this is this is gonna be very violent very <laughs> but yeah the the whole mind games and stuff in it i've been like just trying to figure out okay 
how are they going to break out of this whole curse thing. It's just something that was super entertaining to me. Number 18, another thing dealing with the mind and being smart and intelligent and dealing with things would have to be Code Geass, uh, Lelouch of the Rebellion. At first, because I'm not a big Mecha fan, I, I, I kind of wanted to brush it off. Um, just, just like it took me forever to finally watch Neon <laughs> Genesis Evangelion because I'm not big into Mechas. I kind of got put on to it from my little sister and yeah, I like just seeing tactics play out and, and seeing how the mind games work to try and you know come out on top and also see what is true justice really being carried out and stuff like that. That aspect of Code Geass is something that I always really, really uh, enjoyed in, in storytelling uh, tactics and such. So, like, when I ended up watching that, I was just like, yeah, yeah, this is just entertaining and I, and I really like it. I really enjoy it. Number 17, just out of its sheer entertainment value, it's also like a dear childhood memory of mine growing up, just growing up watching the show, being like, what in the world is this nonsense, it's bonkers, but even just seeing how it actually relates to, you know, going through puberty and maturing and stuff like that, um, I'm talking about FLCL or Furikuri! So is crazy. Um, just the, the like what I love about it is just just how it explores the, that that puberty and maturing theme in such an imaginative way and like doing it in so many different mediums uh, because the way the art style ends up changing all the time and stuff like that is just really cool to watch. It's just so entertaining and the fact that they're having a second season um, like out of nowhere I'm just like oh sweet that's cool with me. I wonder how they're going to you know continue the story or if they're going to do maybe a separate story that's somewhat related or something like that but yeah that show will always be near and dear to my heart man. Always. At number 16 we gonna bring in Shuffle. Now, this is like one of the few romance-oriented shows that that I even have on this list. But like, when it comes to kind of the the whole um, harem romance kind of genre kind of thing, this this one just kind of it kind of hit me in in a nice spot. Um, it, it's just. The way it was done, I was like, wow, it was really entertaining, and and the the questions are kind of kind of brought up about how how to find out who you love, and and what sacrifices you're willing to make to to know, make it a reality. That's what I was trying to say. Is is something that I really really enjoyed, um, in watching that series, and the characters. I just kind of I just kind of you know fell in love with each of their, their personalities and, and the way that worked out. Now we're at 15, another one that I uh, that has some romance, but the reason why I have it above Shuffle is because it also balances action so well. I feel like this is like the, the show that balances action elements that you would love in like a shonen and the romance element that you would get in a sojo or maybe even the slice of life romance thing and and melds it in the most perfect blend and it's actually something I'm rewatching now Inuyasha Inuyasha to me is the most balanced show I've seen that can really ride that line of overall appeal there's because there's so much action there's a pretty awesome story along with it a little bit lengthy at the <laughs> but still entertaining and, and like has the action has the romance element and it's very believable and you could 
watch it and be like, and just get hooked. And you're just like, I, I can't wait to see the next episode just to see where it'll, where it'll go. Will they last? Will they actually, you know, become an idol? Or will it go back to Kikyo? Or all the, all that stuff is, is, is just as relevant to you as all the cool action uh, in that aspect of the plot. Like, will we finally be able to defeat Naraku? Will, you know, you know, justice really be had? And will they actually collect all the Sheikon jewels? You know, stuff like that. It's just, yeah, it's really good. Really, really good. Number 14, another one that I kind of, kind of watched, uh, for the first time when I was really young and, and just loved it, especially the soundtrack. You know, I'm a sucker for soundtracks, but even the story was just really fun to watch. And it's done by one of my favorite uh, directors, I'd have to say, is Samurai Champloo. Yeah, so Mugen, Jane, and Fu, you know? they It's just a fun, a fun group of, of individuals just going all across Japan trying to find um, Fu's father and that whole the all the antics that occur along the way that may not even really have to do with them actually finding samurai smells of, of sunflowers you know that whole show it's just it's just a fun ride with a lot of really cool action great music in the background too and just cool characters and it's it's just one of those shows where you could just put on and just be like yeah this is so dope like it's easy it's easy easily digestible and just entertaining to watch so it may not have like the most deep plot but every episode definitely gives you something that you can enjoy. Number 13, where the story just... <clears throat> Blue Gender, man. Blue Gender. And this is another one that I like. Like, if you've seen my All That Matters About anime, you know that when I saw this young, it just, like, the images with the blue just kind of creeped me out, man. It creeped me out so much. But I loved that show. It's so good. So gripping. Good drama. Good humanizing. Uh, and, you know, always coming back to that theme of, you know, what what's really the most that you really can do for the good of mankind, you know, should you sacrifice these people's lives for, you know, getting rid of the threat just to reclaim the planet. Um, it's, it's so, so, so cool. And the movie version, oh my gosh, that's doo-doo. But the actual show was so good. Um, and, and just seeing the relationship culminate in that show between um, Marlene and I think it's Yuji. Yeah, yeah, that that show is just really, really good, really good. Um, that that whole story, and then like even the ending was just like, what? That's that's so what? Even though it was one of those strange endings like I still really enjoyed it and it it was interesting interesting the way they 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 concluded it but I I still heavily enjoyed it at number 12 we get another very very story and even character kind of driven show uh, with Ghost in the Shell standalone complex. I'm including the first and second gig. Man, though that that show and the soundtrack. Oh, Yoko Kano. I just ah uh, ah. Uh. But anyway, the whole the whole story, man. The drama in in it, and you know the maturity of that show. It's just something that 
that I thought I would never really be into, but like, I'd have to say that, that like Blue Gender and Ghost in the Shell are like two of the like first shows that were like really mature in in its delivery that I really latched onto outside of like some of the more mature elements of some of the things that are higher up on my list that I also watched growing up. But like, cause the thing is, th those shows were just kind of like serious from the get go and there definitely was not as many jokes at all in it. <laughs> There's very little lighthearted moments in those shows. With every mission and seeing that team work together to try and, and solve each crime and even the overarching crimes um, that, that you know, lead, lead up to the big baddies on each uh, show's season. You just end up loving the team and wanting to follow all the different things that they've gone through. The movie is really nice too. The funny thing is I saw the movie after I saw the TV show. Um, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is supposed to be mainly shows. That's why there's no movies included on this. So at 11, getting close to that top 10, is Soul Eater. Another great shonen that I like. The action and, and you know, the, the whole thing about like conquering fear and learning how to have courage and be brave, that whole that whole thing is such a shonen topic to to, um, to tackle. They did it in a way that I just absolutely loved, and, and seeing each character's growth throughout, and you know, and learning new techniques, and then overcoming different individual setbacks that they had, and learning how to try and make that work with each other. Uh, you know, because you know, to have this whole resonance and everything. He, you really have to be in sync with each other, and, and yeah, it it was in Soul Links, and it it was just it was a really 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 fun watch. Um, yeah, definitely definitely nabbed that spot at 11. So now we're finally at the top 10. Oh my God! I wonder what in the world there could be in the top 10. And we have. The one exception that I was saying about earlier that ended earlier this year, but I don't care. I gotta have this on the hair. Do rah rah rah. Because even before I knew they were going to continue and finish off that story, I was like, I love this show. I love this show so much. Um, just uh, the way all, like, I, when I was watching the show for the first time and I just like, it was just like the first two seasons, um, I was just amazed at how dude, they really created a, like a world, a living, breathing city where you just had this huge cast of characters. Like, and the thing is, as they kept going, they kept adding more and more people, but they still handled them all with with pretty, pretty much well cared throughout a whole, a whole gaggle of people, <laughs> and I know they're not actually, um, but yeah, it, how they were able to do all these these different storylines and make sure they all somehow got interlocked and and put together that to, to make it all make sense, like it, it was just amazing and it always had me coming back because it was like you just never know all right who is it gonna follow this time like who in the cast who which group of characters is it gonna follow on this one or will i see the end of maybe what one little situation that i just got done watching and like you just kept bringing you back to see that every week and i i, I just ah uh, like all the characters man is just in the in the, the humor in it the action then is the characters you just 
if you like with such a huge cast of characters you there's no way you cannot find a few that you just really love but yeah the motivations behind some of the characters is just like really man it's so it's so weird but I don't care because I know you now <laughs> it's just like uh, it's just yeah this is really good really good number nine man all right so with this show uh like because the thing is i was watching the first version of this show when it was first coming out on adult swim and but then i had to but then i just kind of dropped it and then i got told about the remake by my best friend and he was like dude you have to watch this and i was like all right all right i'll i'll, I'll go back and watch it then I watched Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood and I'm just blown away. Completely blown away. Then I went back and watched the original. Then watched Brotherhood again. <laughs> I definitely like Brotherhood over uh, the, I think it was a 2006 version of Full Metal Alchemist. Um, but yeah, or was it 2003? I can't remember, but anyway. Brotherhood is the one I have to put here at number nine. Amazing characters, amazing growth, like just the 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 links that the Elric brothers go through to try and achieve the goal that and, and basically almost have pen to to have penance for the the way they misuse the the skill of alchemy is is just amazing and the action in it is it's just so stellar and is and the way they're also to try the way they're able to tie it into like the the pseudoscience of it all and, and two is just it's really great it, because even though you know alchemy in that sense is not really a thing they they really do a good job of kind of grounding it somewhat in reality and and how having the characters go through what they do you just really are able to quickly grasp their motivations and root for them because with every step and triumph and setback you're just there for them the entire time it's such such a great story such a great story that i would definitely recommend anybody to check out at number eight and talk about pseudoscience <laughs> um <laughs> steins gate man steins gate like dealing with time again you know time loop time travel <sighs> it's just man that show just end up falling in love with these characters again it's just like as you can tell like, characters really mean a lot story also means a lot and just to see the the crazy as they say and see this this guy who's kind of smart but also just kind of silly and dumb at times <laughs> try to figure out how to work this this they got micro my, microwave that's actually like time traveling messages to the past and it's yeah man it's the story is just it's just crazy but what it what that whole thing does like cause once you get towards the end it just gets darker and darker and just seeing him try to remedy the situation even though he keeps having the girl die over and over and trying to save her and without trying to sacrifice Christina it's just like you can't help but just be like, man, that situation is just 
just seems like the worst. And at number seven, let's get back into some action. You know what I'm saying, man. Claymore, man. It's one I can go back to at any time, man. Like any, almost anything at this in this top ten, I could just go back to at any time and and just enjoy the whole ride. Like I can go into it and just watch the whole thing because the whole thing is just dope. And with Claymore, I just love, 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 love the action. Like when it comes to to action, like like adult action this one just takes the cake just seeing the girl like again and like trying to maintain you like your your humanity while going at lengths to avenge you know your your fallen love um it's man like that show it's just so entertaining it's so cool to just like see all the different um abilities each of the claymores have and see how they're able to push their push their own limits to and to all near the the brink of losing you know what makes them human it, it's yeah it's just really really entertaining and that mug i just when i'm looking for a bloody good time that's one i can definitely go to <laughs> but speaking of more action and <laughs> just going balls to the wall stories man <sighs> black good Black Lagoon comes in at six. Oh, man, I love this show so much. <laughs> Revy is like such a character that you just, you just know. It's like, you when she hops on, on the screen, you just know. It's like, yeah, that's a bad, that's a BA chick right there, man. You don't want to mess with that chick right there. Two hands ready, man. She she messed somebody up. You know how how you know girls go for like the bad boys or whatever. Like Revy Revy is our bad girl. Like she is just she's just bad. She's like she's like the Angelina Jolie or currently like the like Scarlett Johansson of of uh like animated me man she's just ba in almost every single single situation but also you realize oh there's 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 actually a little bit of heart in there i i like that. all the craziness that the black lagoon lagoon company go through is insane and like seeing how they're weaved into the whole crime ridden world of Roanifer and all the different syndicates and, and stuff like that and seeing how they work with the you know the the gosh why can't I think of their name but anyway the the Russian group that that army and seeing how they deal with Bella Laika and junk like that and it's it just the action and it's it just so good it's so so good and seeing how you know it really questions uh, what it's like growing up in the underworld and then being drawn in to like falling into the the underworld and if you're able to really keep unscathed when you're you know still rub hands with what goes on in the world, which is kind of like what Rock ends up doing, even though he's not someone who decides to kill, he definitely has a hand in what can end up getting people killed and stuff. And it's just that whole story, yeah, is just like, like even though you think that it's just all action, all action, all action, just fight. 
violence. There's actually like kind of some thought provoking things that go behind it that I that is just like, huh, interesting. Like there's real motivations behind the characters, so not just vehicles of cool bad buttery for the <laughs> uh, lack of cursing. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean. Like, including that movie. Like, one of the movies, like, out of a lot of these shows that have movies, like, that's one that I watched that I was just like, yeah, this still kept up the awesomeness that is, you know, the original show. But, let's go ahead and move on to my top five. Which, um, if you've seen my top five um, video before it got taken down, um, it has not really changed. Um, but at number five is Kurokami. This show, man, like, you can definitely tell when you're watching it, that it was made with the younger audience in mind, yet still, it manages to be very hard hitting with the action, really cool animation on it, and also with uh, a message that that is so well delivered that I, I, I can't help but just let it warm my heart with, you know, taking, taking destiny into your own hands, uh, and, and really creating the future that you want despite all odds. Kurokami does that so well and and it's another show where the music just I just love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it so much. Love love the characters and, and just, just love every everything about it is just really cool and it's something I really enjoy. Uh, number four, we gotta go back to the heavy and serious and questioning, like deep morals and themes of um, Monster at number four. Definitely that show, even though it's another longer series, that mug is a story that you just cannot, cannot get enough of. He was just like, oh my god. Will Dr. Tenma ever find Johan? Will he actually take his life? What will he do? What, what's really the best option? Do you, you know, save the monster? Or do you get rid of the monster and say it's just? And then all the lives Dr. Tenma touches throughout the series as he's trying to find Johan all throughout uh, Germany. And I think even a little, little bit of Austria, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, that that show was just done so well, so well. Like, is one of the, cause it's another one that just doesn't have any filler. There's like no filler in that show. Everything it does and presents has a purpose and seems like a very real story that you end up hearing or reading and you'd be like wow did that really happen because because it, it'd be really scary that it, it, it happened but oh that whole story of the monster and the themes it touches on is just so number three Number three, we gotta give it to Death Note. That mug, man. <laughs> yeah, you would think something so popular probably wouldn't be up there like that. But the last three that I have on my list are actually rather popular. But they're popular for a reason. Sometimes the hype was definitely well deserved. Um, but yeah. Death Note, man. I had to put that. I had to put Death Note over Monster, just due to the entertainment value. Like, yes, Monster 
is gripping and you want to keep watching each episode but death note actually like even though it deals with like the very serious topic and you know what's true justice is it really right for you to get rid of bad individuals just to for the sake of making you know, people be kind and, and you know through force basically or is it better to get rid of the person who's trying to say what all is just and such is is it really right for basically a man to play God even though it has that very serious you know kind of dilemma throughout the series it's rather entertaining just to watch like there's a lot of parts of it that you can just kind of laugh at and it's, it's not as heavy and just the fact that it's not as realistic as Ponster that makes it a little bit more fun to watch I guess and just seeing that cat and mouse game because um, I think that's another thing you you see a little bit more of the villain in Death Note and, and if you really can call him the villain but just because L is really the one who's kind of right in this situation. But, you know, it's just, you know, that that whole anti-hero kind of thing is, is fun to watch. Um, and just seeing who really can outwit the other. While, you know, with Monster, it's just like, can he actually catch up to him? At number two, which may surprise some people, if you haven't already seen my top five, um, is going to be Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, yeah, it's not number one, it's number two for me. Cowboy Bebop, man. Another one by uh, Sinichiro um, Watanabe, man, and with Yoko Kano on the, the compositions, man. It's just. The show is just so well done. Each story in it is just fun and like allows you to really see each each side of the characters and just you can't wait to see what else what else you know the 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 world they live in is gonna put them through as they are just these penniless struggling bounty hunters dealing with trying to live and and also confront their past it's just it's just a really great show and the and the episodes that deal with the main arc are just so well done and that you just like yeah this is this is worth watching. I tried to get my my dad to to try and watch the show with me, but like what I really should have done is uh, take advice of some other anime YouTubers that I've seen and start off with like some of the main plot episodes because it does kind of start off slow, but when you already know kind of characters and what the motive, real motivations are. You can handle some of the slower paced episodes it starts off with but the action in it is great and the humor in it is really great the the story it has the, the tales that the, the side plots are nice the the characters you meet you just really get to know like the back of your hand just because you get to see them in so many different real life situations that have that little sci-fi twist that's like what but you still just like oh yeah that, that happened in that universe that, that totally happened <laughs> yeah you do yeah kind of will be one man one of the grim and I, I just like many people will stand behind this like one of the greatest dubs to ever ever be made um it's just so good show is just, just, just like it. <laughs> but now before I go ahead and tell you my number one I'm gonna go ahead and throw in some honorable mentions some shows that 
I really, really enjoy, but just couldn't make the top 20. Like, Jormungand, I think, would probably end up being on there. DBZ, um, that was like the one that I kind of, that really introduced me to the world of anime, and, and that I felt bad. Not included in my top 20, but I really thought that Yu Yu Hakusho did better as a show overall. Great Teacher Onizuka is, is another really, really great show. This unlikely, kind of dumb teacher be one of the best teachers that this class of students need. It's just, it's just a really fun watch. And being able to see how he, his odd approach to teaching these children is exactly what they need and, and allow them to become the best versions of themselves. Kill the Kill is another one that I have down on my uh, honorable mentions list. Action and even with a good message that I wasn't expecting. Um, I really just thought it was going to be like really cool action, but it actually had a message too that I, I really enjoyed. Psychopath was a really great show. Um, I do agree that with uh, Digibro that the first season is definitely better than the second. I still have yet to watch the movie, but I'm going to soon. Um, the Melancholy of Haruki and Tuzania. Yeah, that show. Really good. Including the movie, of course. You have to include the movie or else it doesn't seem to conclude very well to me. <laughs> but yeah, the disappearance of Harvey Susan Ea. And I just recently decided to watch it in broadcast order, and it's definitely different. <laughs> I definitely, I definitely would have to say, yeah, watch it in chronological order instead of broadcast order. Let's uh, go ahead and conclude this bad boy with my number one uh another show that i grew up with and then continue to go back and re-watch and re and, and question does this really deserve that one spot just like i always had to be like does cowboy bebop really deserve that number two spot but you know over time as in, every time i go back to it i'm like yeah I don't care how ugly it looks at, at times. I love it. I love it. I love the story. I love the characters. I love its message. And there's no way anyone can ever make me not love it until I genuinely see something that is better than my opinion. So number one. Trigo. Love that show. Love that show so much. Bash the Stampede, they gun it. Bash the Stampede is my hero, man. <laughs> Love and peace, man. Love and peace. Love and peace. Gotta, gotta give it hands down to Trigo. All the characters, they all have a very clear voice. And all the things they go through, it, it's, it's just fun. It's just a fun show. And even as it gets more serious, as you get down to business with knives, it's, it, I'm telling you guys, it's just that good. It's, I love it. The way he's able to be so, so awesome and great as a gunslinger and not even want to really use, basically use those skills for good and not hurt people. Like, who's heard of a person who just gets really good at using a weapon only to help people with it and not actually hurt anyone? Like, who does that? The cops? No! Haha! <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but yeah, anyway, Trigun, number one, gotta love it. Oh my gosh, yes. So yeah, that is my top 20, uh, top 20 favorite anime. Not saying it's the best anime, like, technically, on a technical level, just my favorite that I love to watch again and again. Um, and including the honorable mentions and such. But yeah, man. If you want to see what I think in a very succinct uh, way, you can always check out um, what I think, well, or what I rate shows on myanimelist.net. Uh, uh, the my name on there is the same as it is on the channel Blipmaster5 so you can check that out down below and make sure I have that link down there and then also I sometimes do reviews on anime that I'm watching um, if you're not already watching this on Muddy Cult um, and that will be down below as well um, if you need the link uh, and yeah, I think that's, that's it. So, much love, peace, peace. Thank you guys for checking out my video about my top 20 animes that I just personally enjoy. If you want to see some other thoughts that I have on anime, you can either check out this video for all that matters saying don't do anime. Or you can check out the Muddy Cult blog where I sometimes do anime reviews. That link will be down below. And if you are interested in some other things that I do on the channel, you can either check out this personally recommended video from YouTube on my channel, or you can subscribe here. And every other week I'll come out with things that do with anime, uh, music, uh, dancing, comedy, all that good stuff. If you're interested in my own personal music, you can check out my website, fireblaster.com. It's the easiest way to check it out. Or you could just sift through this channel and um, if you got some suggestions of what you want to see here just let me know and maybe I'll keep it in mind for next time alright so see you in two weeks peace